you should be able to see this talk right in front of you and hopefully uh, it'll work on. Well, listen, you know, uh, my clinic is Lake Norman Health and Wellness. Uh, once again, I'm Dr. Green, Dr. Akiba Green. And um, just give me one second here. Oh, hang on. Da, 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 da. There we go. Ah, perfect. Excellent. All right. Uh, we have rebranded our clinic as Lake Norman Integrative Wellness. And you may notice uh, some of our uh, pieces, uh, collateral website, uh, Facebook page, Instagram have uh, the new logo. Uh, there's still some of the old logos, but uh, it is our same clinic where we just rebranded it to better emphasize uh, the services that we offer our patients. Um, so uh, we are talking about an introduction to a non-drug treatment of, uh, of thyroid dysfunction utilizing functional medicine. All right. So uh, again, my name is Dr. Akiba Green. I am a doctor of natural medicine. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background on myself. Uh, a lot of my training uh, started years ago in chiropractic. I am not a practicing chiropractor. I practice as a doctor of natural medicine or traditional naturopath. Uh, I do have a fellowship in integrative cancer therapy that uh, I received through the University of South Florida Medical School. I am board certified in anti-aging, regenerative and functional medicine uh, in combination with my cancer fellowship through the American Board of Anti-Aging Health Professionals and the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. I'm a certified functional medicine practitioner. Uh, I am board eligible as a diplomate of the American Board of Clinical Nutrition uh, because of a 300 hour doctoral level nutrition program that I completed. I'm a certified uh, functional, I'm certified in functional neurology through the American Functional Neurology Institute. I'm currently enrolled in Brain Health University or BrainMD, which is Dr. Daniel Amen's clinical functional neurology program. I have studied integrative cancer treatment under Dr. Kevin Connors and Dr. Mark Rosenberg. I'm part of Dr. Mark Rosenberg's uh, Accelerated Clinical Excellence for Cancer uh, Treatment Program and mentorship that he offers. Uh, Dr. Rosenberg uh, is the head of the fellowship at uh, George Washington College of Medicine, uh, and uh, he has a private practice in South Florida and is at the cutting edge of cancer treatment. Studied functional blood chemistry, advanced thyroid management, functional endocrinology and functional gastroenterology under Dr. Datis Karazian. And basically over the past 12 years, I've spent my life trying to become a better doctor. And it's, it's been hundreds and hundreds of hours of training and uh, all these different certifications and letters after my name really point towards me being able to help you, the thyroid sufferer, improve your health better. So I've got three things for you to know today, uh, three goals, if you will. Number one, my most important goal for you is I'm here to reinvent your life. Goal number two, I'm here to add maximum positive impact to every single one of you. And goal number three is for you to have an exit strategy, how to improve your health today. Uh, and we'll talk about lifestyle changes that are involved in that. So are you sick and tired of not getting answers? You, know, you go to the thyroid doctor, right? And you say, hey, how are my numbers? And they say, your TSH is high. We are going to change your medication because you need more, your TSH is low, you're on too much medication, and you never really feel different. You don't feel better, you're still suffering. What I can tell you right now is the doctor that you're currently seeing doesn't know what he or she is doing. They don't. They have not been trained properly in how to manage your thyroid. How long have you had your thyroid disorder? That's why I know that they don't know what they're doing because you've been living with these problems for so many years. In fact, oh gosh, why doesn't the endocrinologist know this? I mean, if you really think about that, the overwhelming majority of endocrine doctors that are out there, the overwhelming majority of physicians, they don't read medical journals. There's simply no time in our modern insurance mandated world for them to read medical journals. So they rely on what they learned in medical school 15, 20, even 30 years ago. And quite simply, it's outdated information. It is not current information. Really, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters for you guys when you're here trying to figure out about your thyroid is results, and you're not getting any. That's all that matters. So the reason you're seeing the doctor that you're seeing is not because he's good. We know that you're still suffering despite everything that's happened. You are seeing your doctor. You're going to your doctor because insurance covers them. And listen, you have to understand these doctors that you're seeing will never get you where you want to be because the model, the standard of care is not designed to help fix the problem with your thyroid. It's only designed to get you on medication that supposedly manages or balances out TSH, which some of you may see, but a lot of you know never actually happens. 
So one thing I need you guys to know, okay? You want to write this down if, if you can. You are all suffering from the same problem. All of you have what we call a web of physiological dysfunction. None of you out there have just one problem. Physiologically, it's an impossibility. When I talk about a web of dysfunction, a web of physiological dysfunction, what I'm talking about is this. You have all these different symptoms, all these different problems. Everything is going on at the same time. You have blood sugar imbalances, adrenal problems, thyroid problems, mind-body issues. You've got gut dysfunction, immune system imbalances, liver dysfunction, brain neurotransmitter problems, cellular dysfunction, emotional issues. And gosh, it's very confusing. It can be. And quite simply, many doctors will give up and they pass the buck to the next specialist. But if we don't address specific problems in your web of physiological dysfunction, you will never fix your thyroid. So you all have brain problems. You all have nerve problems. I don't even know you, and I can tell you that you have these things going on. You have a thyroid problem, most likely because you're watching this workshop. You have gut problems, short-term memory problems, metabolic problems. All of these things are going on at the same time. And the reality is, gosh, they don't make a pill to fix these type of problems. So we're gonna talk about your web of physiological dysfunction. And remember what I said, right, right? You're all suffering from brain-based problems. So we're gonna talk about that just a little bit too. And we're gonna talk about the brain and we're gonna help figure out why you have your thyroid issues as we go through these problems. I'm gonna see if I can figure out which of you is online here. Um, they always make it a bit of a challenge for me to uh, get things going the way we want to. So let me see if I can pull this up here with us. Let's see, yeah. Um, there, ah, there we go. Perfect. Excellent. All right. Good, 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 good. Perfect. Hey, Joel. Hey, I've got you on here. I'm glad you're here. Perfect. Perfect. All right. I can now catch and see people are talking to us as I go forward. All right. So listen, different areas of the brain are responsible for different functions. Okay. You've got your frontal lobe. It's responsible for personality. You've got your hippocampus. It's where you store memory. Your parietal lobe is where you deal with sensation. So these parts of the brain are really, really important for you. Your frontal lobe is the largest lobe, so it needs lots of energy. It defines our personality. It leads to executive decisions, social behavior, impulse control. It allows for focus. It governs our planning and motivation, voluntary muscle movement, like your gross and fine motor movement. And it also has an impact on depression or motivation. Uh, frontal lobe fatigue can actually be depression. Another part of the brain I want to talk about is called the hippocampus. It's responsible for language, memory, hormones, sense of direction, sleep-wake cycles, and what's interesting is Alzheimer's disease and dementia is a degeneration of the hippocampus. Right, another part of the brain is the parietal lobe. It's responsible for processing all touch sensations, hot, cold, and pain, interpreting sensations like texture, weight, size or shape. It interprets input from the skin, muscles, joints, and vision so that the body knows where it is, at, at where it's at in its environment. And you know what? These pieces of the brain, the frontal lobe, the hippocampus, the parietal lobe are so, so important. So if you have a symptom there, if you have a problem there, how do you fix it? How do you fix your parietal lobe? They don't make a pill that will correct your parietal lobe. So if someone has short-term memory loss, how many pills are there to fix your short-term memory bank? None. Hey, Joanna. Hey, hope you do great. Glad to see you joining me. Thanks for watching, it's my wife. Um, glad to be here with all of you guys. Uh, all right, so if your parietal lobe is malfunctioning, right? It can affect every, if your brain is malfunctioning, it can affect every part of your anatomy. Nerves go to your organs. Nerves go to your extremities. Nerves go to your spine. Nerves also go to your thyroid and gut and everywhere else. We have to fix your brain to fix your thyroid and help get your body the relief that you're looking for and improve the symptoms that you're dealing with. All right, so when we talk about thyroid dysfunction, the first thing to touch on is if you have a bad thyroid, you have a bad brain. And if you have a bad brain, you have a bad gut, your gastrointestinal tract. So the majority of people deal with thyroid disorders is what we call low thyroid function or hypothyroidism. 90% of hypothyroidism is actually due though to something called autoimmune disease. 
And this is when your immune system mistakenly attacks your body. In fact, the most common form of hypothyroid autoimmune disease is something called Hashimoto's. Uh, the Journal of Endocrine and Metabolic Disorders in 1998 actually published this research. And it's the most common autoimmune disease that affects women. So literally, your thyroid affects everything in your body. And if we talk about symptoms associated with thyroid disease, gosh, you've got this tiny little gland, right? And you've got two little sides to it. And it's right below the larynx and it's right above the trachea. And it's really quite small. It's only a couple centimeters in size, but it controls so many different functions in the body and the symptoms associated with it, like fatigue, weight gain, headaches, depression, constipation. Gosh, so many of these symptoms. I mean, let's talk about a few of these, fatigue, right? One of the biggest symptoms we see in the clinic is fatigue. Patients come in and they are tired always. How about weight gain? That's a huge symptom. You have a weight problem, you think, hey, I think that I have a thyroid problem. Well, you may. Even on a low calorie diet, if you have problems with weight, your thyroid could be affected. Morning headaches that wear off as the day goes on. How about depression, anxiety, and brain fog? Constipation is another big one. So GI problems, right? What about stomach ache, gas, bloating, reflux? Again, these GI problems are very classic relating to thyroid disease. Cold weather sensitivity, poor circulation. In fact, we see correlations between a disease called Raynaud's and people who have thyroid disease. How about no matter how much sleep you get, you're still tired. You wake up, you're tired. You get eight hours of sleep, you go back to bed. You get 10 hours of sleep, you go back to bed. 12 hours of sleep, you can go right back to bed. Itchy dry skin. Dry, brittle hair and or hair loss, especially the lateral third of the eyebrow. It's very classic for uh, thyroid autoimmune disease. So every cell in your body has these receptors for your thyroid. They all do. They all get affected. And gosh, when we talk about thyroid physiology, we talk about all these symptoms, right? So we say, okay, I have symptoms of thyroid disease, but I think it's important for us to actually talk about how your thyroid works. And so we're going to talk about physiology. And I'm going to put this screen up. I'm going to have all of you guys write this down on your computer or screen print it. Just kidding. You don't have to. Uh, and I do this when I do our live workshops. I, I love talking about this. It looks, I, it looks very confusing. A lot of things are going on. But really, this is a very basic concept that I want everyone to understand, okay? Your thyroid starts in the brain. There's a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. And it sends a signal to a part of the brain called the pituitary gland that makes something called thyroid releasing hormone. TRH tells the pituitary gland to make something you probably heard of, TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. That tells the thyroid gland to make hormone. In a normal protocol, in a normal world, in a perfect world I should say, if TSH is high, it means that your thyroid is low. If TSH is low, it means your thyroid is high. That's not always reality. But what TSH does, it causes enzymes to stimulate the release of two hormones from your thyroid gland. T4, which is a thyroid molecule with four iodines, and T3, which is a thyroid molecule and three iodines. The majority of what you make is T4. And these hormones then have to be transported throughout the body. I call it the hormone taxi cab, thyroid binding globulin. And they go to other tissues like the liver, the gut, the pancreas, all these other areas, all these other tissues. And once they're in those tissues, they then convert T4 into T3. So here's the important piece. You make T4, 93% of what you make is T4, but you don't use it. It's the inactive form of the hormone. So you have to convert it into T3. And that doesn't take place in the thyroid. So the first key thing here is, if you are being managed at your thyroid, you probably are not having your hormones actually balanced. You have to be mal managed at your body level, the whole level, because different organs impact thyroid function. Once T4 is turned into free T3, it then has to be used by the cells. And we see a lot of people who show healthy, normal thyroid levels on a blood test, but they don't feel healthy because of two reasons. Either they're not having the right tests done, so tests are being missed that are abnormal, and we'll get to that later, or two, there's increased resistance in these cells themselves 
or there's nutrients not in the cells. So the body isn't using the thyroid hormone free T3 effectively. There's a great book that's out there. If you've never read this book, why do I still have thyroid symptoms? So my lab tests are normal. Uh, Dr. K, Dr. Katis Karazian is a great, great doc uh, to, to follow and, and learn more about. Uh, and, and I would encourage you to, uh, to track down this book. All right. So we're going to talk about some other pieces of the puzzle, right? Your thyroid has to be balanced. And if you need hormone, we need hormone. Now, there are different types of thyroid hormones. Let's touch on that for just a quick second, okay? There is something called Synthroid. This is synthetic T4. Something called level thyroxine. That's generic synthetic T4. Something called T3, and it can be synthetic like cytomel or low iothyronine. Or you can have something called natural desiccated thyroid or NDT, which is going to be both T4 and T3. And they are bioidentical, meaning the body recognizes them as its own hormone. You may have heard of armor thyroid, WP or NP thyroid, or nature thyroid. These are different types of natural desiccated thyroids. There are other ones that we talk with our patients about as well. We can give our patients the right type of hormone and see improvements by utilizing thyroid hormone itself. All right. So you have a thyroid problem, we've looked at your thyroid, and you still are suffering. What else do we have to look at? Your adrenal gland. The adrenal gland are two little glands that sit on top of the kidneys. You've got one on each side, and they release cortisol and other hormones in response to stress. So this cortisol and cortisone, these hormones, set your sleep cycle. They help blood sugar, and they affect other hormones. So we see these hormones like testosterone, estrogen, DHEA, progesterone, DHT get affected by cortisol. So a patient can have a adrenal health problem. And again, it's your stress hormone, your stress gland, right? With these stress hormones. If you have a problem with stress, then you're going to have a problem with other hormones in your body. So it's incredibly important for us to make sure that your adrenal gland is working properly. In fact, your brain gets affected when cortisol is abnormal. And mostly your hippocampus which we talked about earlier, is responsible for short-term memory, which is why if you're ever running late for a meeting or a Facebook Live workshop and you have a problem where something doesn't work right, or you're just trying to get out the door, right? And you're so late, you're so worried that you forget where you put your keys or you forgot something basic. The reason for that is because your brain gets frazzled, it gets pushed when your stress hormone cortisol gets stimulated, and that can create these symptoms. And there's a direct correlation between the adrenals and your brain function because cortisol destroys your brain when it's abnormal. And realistically, thyroid symptoms can often be adrenal symptoms and adrenal symptoms can often be thyroid symptoms. Talk about like hair loss, fatigue, sleep problems, or hot flashes. I mean, it kind of sounds like menopause, but it could be thyroid disease or adrenal fatigue. They can all lead the same symptoms themselves which is why we have to check all three areas, your hormones, your adrenals, and your thyroid to know what's actually causing your symptoms. And we're all at risk. There are five stages of adrenal function, and we have to make sure that we assess them properly. I use a test called a Dutch test, a dry urine test for comprehensive hormones that gives me the detailed info that we need to support this system. All right, how about hormones? In males, abnormalities in our hormones leads to andropause or low testosterone symptoms, or prostate disease typically. In females, we can have infertility issues, menopause, or menstrual cycle problems. So why do we have hormone problems? Blood sugar involvement, like insulin resistance, the adrenals, thyroid, and brain can be involved. And there's something called the HP axis, the hypothalamus pituitary axis, which can affect one hormone or the other. In fact, the HP axis controls all of our hormones, thyroid, like TSH, cortisol regulation, the adrenals, male and female hormones, like luteinizing hormone or follicle stimulating hormone, LH, FSH, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. In fact, a problem with one leads to a problem with the rest. How about blood sugar, all right? So optimal functioning blood sugar technically is 85 to 99, that's wrong. At 100, you are pre-diabetic. So I really look for 75 to 85. And here's the thing, if it gets too low, 60s and low 70s, it can lead to nerve damage. It's called hypoglycemia. If it goes too high, 
pre-diabetic or insulin resistance above 100, then it can lead to neuropathy. It can lead to nerve damage, not just in the nerves, but even in the brain itself. For maximum results, if I'm going to fix your life, I have to fix your blood sugar. How about anemias? Now, when we talk anemia, we are talking about a red blood cell dysfunction. I'm not talking about just iron. Iron deficiency anemia is a specific type. B12 deficiency anemia is a specific type. Uh, you can also have anemia that's the result of infections, blood loss, like menstrual loss, or colon or stomach problems, or even trauma. Or it can be an autoimmune disease like pernicious anemia, which is an autoimmune attack on what makes B12. Chronic infections and chronic disease can also lead to anemia. If you have red blood cell dysfunction, if you have anemia, we have to fix the cause of the anemia in order to fix the anemia. That's the goal. All right, how about gut dysfunction? Let's talk about the GI system, right? Poor gut function. So we have to give a nod to Hippocrates. He was the father of medicine. And he said, look to the gut, there you will find the origin of almost all human illness. So we know that the immune system, 70 to 80% is in your gut. So if you have Hashimoto's, and remember 90% of low thyroid function is autoimmune, with Hashimoto's being the most common form of autoimmune disease, then we have to look at your gut as a driver, a cause of this. So poor gut function is almost always due to one of two things, food sensitivities, and we'll, we'll get to this in a minute, this is a big piece of this, or infections. So how do we know if you have food sensitivities, right? Well, we'll talk about that. Gluten, casein, soy protein, egg, yeast. There's a whole bunch of things we're going to talk on. How about infections? It could be a gut infection. We'll get to that. But let's start with something called leaky gut. So leaky gut syndrome, if you are not familiar with it, is a breakdown in the small intestine that leads to inflammation that, that is driven by your immune system. So this inflammation is caused because toxins come out of the small intestine and come in contact with your immune system and create the potential for inflammation and autoimmune disease, including Hashimoto's thyroid disease. If you have leaky gut, we have to heal it. You can have abnormal levels of healthy bacteria. You've all heard of probiotics, right? So we have to have healthy bacteria. We have five trillion plus bacteria in our body. And if we don't have a healthy matrix, a healthy environment, the gut biome, if you will, or the jungle, if you will, think about the jungle, uh, and you have to have a healthy jungle, right? A healthy gut biome, then you're not going to be healthy. How about stomach acid imbalances? If any of you have reflux or stomach acid imbalances, I'm telling you right now, it's probably not being caused by too much stomach acid. It's probably being caused by too little. So you have to address and support your stomach properly. In fact, a lot of people uh, may talk to you about apple cider vinegar being beneficial for your stomach. And that's true, it absolutely is. And you can actually utilize apple cider vinegar to help support a healthier digestion in your stomach when that acid drops. You can also utilize betaine HCL capsules to help accomplish that. All right, so let's talk about these two big ones, okay? Uh, let's see, here we go. Uh, okay, good, got it. Let's talk with leaky gut. We talked about that. It's a prerequisite to autoimmune disease, uh, and it allows the food particles to be exposed to the gut's immune system that triggers a system-wide immune response, which leads to inflammation. So that inflammation causes insulin resistance and fat storage due to immune reactions, and gut flora changes can also lead to insulin resistance on their own. That can also lead to an increase in the storage of calories and fat. So that's really important. In fact, leaky gut causes the immune cytokines, the immune system's inflammation to increase and that can lead to brain function. So a leaky gut can lead to a leaky brain. All right, when we talk food sensitivities, I need to differentiate that from food allergies. So an allergy is a severe reaction from the immune system. It's oftentimes instantaneous can be life-threatening. Think of a peanut or shrimp allergy, or asthma, or uh, we can have asthma or anaphylaxis. A food reaction is not severe, but has some symptoms, like an upset stomach, coffee jitters, or gastritis. Uh, and a food sensitivity is what we're talking about. It may not have an immune reaction, it may be silent, it may have no detectable symptoms. So we have to be able to address that and identify it, and then we have to be able to support it. If we talk about food sensitivities with thyroid, the most common one we have to touch on is gluten. So there's been a huge increase in the interest in research on the topic of gluten sensitivity over the past few years. 
although we should probably be labeling it gluten toxicity, in order to shift the focus back onto the cause of the problems, which is gluten itself. In 1971, there were 71 studies listed in PubMed, which is the official medical literature database, which referenced gluten. In 2012, there were almost 10,000. There are now close to 20,000 references. There are so many references that exist the topic of gluten. In fact, the gluten-free industry is over $6 billion a year in sales. And we see a profound shift in the way people perceive the role of wheat in their diets. And this is really important. In fact, there's a gluten food link. In fact, whole wheat used to be celebrated as a powerhouse health food, but now people are increasingly rejecting wheat grains. They see it as the very cause of their health problems. So let's talk about celiac for a second. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease that is driven by the consumption of gluten. 87% of people who have been diagnosed as celiac, they have the genetic genotype and they had a positive biopsy by a gastroenterologist for celiac disease, had no symptoms. This is a study done in the British Medical Journal in 1999. Only 12.5% of celiacs had GI symptoms. This is huge. Most people who have a gluten problem don't know they have a gluten problem. Gastroenterology, 2001. For every symptomatic patient with celiac disease, there are eight patients with celiac disease and no gastrointestinal symptoms. In fact, according to scientists, if researchers had biopsied the brain instead of the gut first, celiac disease would be considered predominantly a neurological disorder and not a gut disorder. So gluten sensitivity is linked to autoimmune disease. Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroid patients have with symptomless celiac disease require 49% more T4 to balance TSH compared to non-celiac Hashimoto's patients. In fact, gluten overstimulates the immune system, so there's no practical difference between celiac disease and gluten sensitivity. Experience shows a gluten-free diet is a must for any autoimmune disease, and I'm giving you guys this as a freebie. If you have Hashimoto's, you have to stop eating gluten 100%. And the problem really lies with incomplete gluten testing. So when you're tested for celiac, and they may even say, if we tested you for gluten, you are fine. Most labs only test two aspects of gluten, alpha-gliadin or tissue transglutaminase. But we know that there are other components that make up wheat. Gliadin has alpha, beta, omega, gamma, alpha, beta, glutenin, and proteinorphin. Those are all different components of gliadin or gluten. Glutenin is a different component Think of oats, you've got the bran or wheat, you've got the bran in the flour, right? So you've got, they can both react theoretically. Glutenin can react differently from gliadin. And there are lectins and other deaminated gliadins and other components that make up wheat. If you don't check all those components, then you're not gonna know what's going on. So the most accurate gluten sensitivity testing is currently through uh, two different labs, Cyrex Laboratories, and we're now starting to use a lab called Vibrant Wellness, which I find, I actually think maybe even more accurate than Cyrex. Uh, blood testing uh, is done with uh, either the Wheat Zoomer through Vibrant Wellness or Ray 3 through Cyrex. And it looks at multiple aspects of the immune response to wheat. And it includes several markers which help to confirm if there's an autoimmune reaction in the body and where it's located at. Uh, what about other foods, right? So you have gluten. Uh, Cyrex has their Array 4. Vibrant Wellness has their food sensitivity test. Again, we're starting to use Vibrant Wellness. 96 foods it looks at. The Cyrex Array 4 looks at 23 foods, but they do look at a lot of similar foods. So dairy, coffee, corn, rice, potatoes, oats, yeast, fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, seeds, oils, um, miscellaneous uh, markers associating with chocolate, with gosh, vanilla extract with rosemary, with spices, really good test. And here's the thing, if it showed reactive, then that means that your body, every time you eat that food is attacking you. So that's what we're looking for. We don't want it to attack you. All right, what about infections? So we talked a little bit about the concept of infections. We have to look at gut infections like H. pylori, Klebsiella, E. coli, parasites like uh, from sushi, uh, worms, from Lake Norman, swimming in a lake, traveling, yeast or fungus like Candida or Saccharomyces. 
I have to touch on two specific diseases, though, that I don't have listed up here. I don't believe them. I don't have them on here. Epstein-Barr virus is one of them, okay? The EBV virus. The Epstein-Barr virus is the virus that causes mono or infectious mononucleosis, which is a disease that often afflicts uh, younger people, and it leads to severe fatigue as the primary symptom. EBV has been implicated as the cause of upwards of over 30 autoimmune diseases, including potentially Hashimoto's. So if you have Hashimoto's, we have to test you for Epstein-Barr virus. If you have Epstein-Barr virus, we can treat it effectively. The other disorder to talk about is Lyme disease. I see Lyme affecting a specific number of patients. We go and do what's called a Western blot test. This is a more accurate blood test for Lyme disease. And what we find is a significant involvement. People have Lyme. And sometimes it's not bad enough to call it Lyme per the CDC's medical legal definition, but they have markers that point towards Lyme type bacteria. Other times it comes out and yeah, you got it, it's full blown. And that can cause your immune system to attack your body. Hashimoto's, Lyme disease, MS, multiple sclerosis, and fibromyalgia are four different diseases that can have these same identical symptoms. Your web of physiological dysfunction leads to what's wrong, your chief complaints. And we have to look at the whole web if we're gonna help you with your thyroid disease. All right, so how many of you have been told your lab tests are all normal? I know that the doctor said that a lot of times there's nothing wrong with you, but why do you feel so lousy then? And the reality is they often don't run the right lab tests. And also they use traditional lab ranges. So when we talk about lab ranges, the same labs, but different results, right? So lab ranges are inaccurate. Uh, you can go through Quest or LabCorp here or in San Diego or Chicago. And everywhere you go, there's a different reference range. So a bell curve is used and those references are based on unhealthy people. It's a population of who's getting blood work done in that area. If you think about it, Healthy people may get blood work done once a year. If you have a health problem that's having blood work to monitor it, you may have blood work done as often as every month. That's a statistic that's gonna go into a population pool. It's based on an unhealthy population group. We look at functional lab values. These are more sensitive to reveal problems before they become so bad that you're now outside of a bell curve. So when we talk about this, you wanna be in that green functional range. You really want to be in the middle, the blue functional lab range. If you're in the red, we know there's a problem, but you can be in that gray area. In fact, we'll use the example of TSH, okay? There's a range, and I've even modified this range further. The lab range should go 0 0.4 to 4.5, 0 0.3 to 5.7. Well, let's say you're at 1.8. Let's say you're at 2.2. You are in the functional range. You're good. You're in the middle of the lab range. Now, let's say you're at 4.0. 0.1 in the lab range is 4.2. You are outside of the functional range. You are hypothyroid, but the lab range may not flag it. It may not show that you're abnormal. This is so important. Cholesterol is another one. Most doctors will say you have to be under 200. What they don't realize is that the FDA says, yes, we can lower numbers with statin medication, but lowering the medication or lowering the numbers on your blood test does not improve your lifespan. It does not improve your health outcomes one bit unless the levels are under three or above 300. So they have to, cholesterol has to be so severe, severe so far for it to make a difference. So a lot of people who are in the, in the 220s, the 230s, 240s for total cholesterol, but they have healthy HDL levels, they have low triglycerides, they're really healthy actually. And you shouldn't do anything to stop that or take it away from that. We know that a lot of issues also, if there's low cholesterol, it can be the result of autoimmune, gut, or liver disease. So it's all about looking at those functional ranges, not just the lab ranges. All right, how about lab testing? So the typical lab test ordered is a TSH, a thyroid stimulating hormone. If you're lucky, they may also look at total T4. Compare that to the true thyroid functional test, which is gonna have all nine of these tests. So free thyroxine index is how much T4 you can use. Free T4 can be affected by medications. T3 uptake is how much of the T3 is used by the body. Free T3 is the active thyroid hormone. 
reverse T3 blocks free T3, and the body cannot use it. And then you have your thyroid antibodies. These indicate Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, which is autoimmune hyperthyroidism or high thyroid function. Here's the point. If you want to see normal, get your lawn chair. Bring it to the discount Wally World. Sit down and look at unhealthy people in our population. The new American normal is not what we want to be. I'm sorry, this is true. You don't want to be overweight eating McDonald's every single day. You want to be healthy. And the problem is you go to your doctor and your doctor is not helping you get there. They are saying, take the medicine and that's it. They don't give you any other recommendations on diet, nutrition, or anything else. And even more important, you have to understand that Hashimoto's and Graves' disease is not a thyroid problem. They are immune problems. So your immune system is mistakenly attacking your thyroid, either TPO, the thyroid gland, or thyroid binding globulin, the taxi cab, or attacking TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, which leads to Graves' disease. And the, again, these are immune problems. So there's an imbalance in your immune system that needs to be addressed through proper testing. My office's job is to fix chronic thyroid and autoimmune problems. That's our specialty. I practice a neurometabolic model of treating chronic health conditions. So in the traditional medical approach, you can wait until tissue destruction is so bad and then squash the entire immune system with steroids. It's symptom management though. It doesn't address the underlying root causes, the underlying metabolic causes. With the thyroid, it's taking medication and chasing TSH levels instead of fixing the cause of your thyroid, which is autoimmunity. It's prescribing antidepressants, it's giving acid reflux medicine. It's the wrong approach. If you have brain imbalances, you may be on medication for anxiety or depression. They don't fix the problem. In fact, many patients come to me who are on SSRIs and they still have anxiety and depression. What about people who consume what are called excitotoxins, like genetically modified ingredients, glyphosate, MSG, or NutraSweet aspartame? they contribute to brain imbalances. In fact, you could be taking your medicine, but doing things like eating gluten and drinking your diet soda, that actually makes your thyroid worse. In a functional medicine approach, it's remove immune triggers. GMO foods and clean living make a role. Your diet is vitally important that we modify. When we use several different diets in our clinic with our patients, they're all based on your individual lab test results. We look for food sensitivities, we look for infections, blood sugar, adrenals, thyroid, and sex hormone problems. How about liver and gallbladder problems? Impaired methylation, B12 or MTHFR folic acid imbalances? Vitamin deficiencies? What about supplements causing your problems? Gosh, you would be surprised. We see so many people that actually are vendors to supplement companies go and they sell stuff, right? And then patients take them, or you go to the vitamin shop and you say, hey, I need, I need something for my immune system. And, and here's the concept for you, okay? Green tea, grapeseed extract, resveratrol, curcumin, caffeine, all push TH1, sorry, TH2, all push T helper two immune system responses. Garlic, vitamin C, echinacea, astragalus, or maitake, or medicinal mushrooms, all push TH1. So if you're pushing TH1, that helps your soldiers your immune system soldiers. Well, if somebody is TH1 dominant, that makes you worse and that's gonna cause your body to attack you. If you're pushing TH2, that helps your antibodies, your, your kind of identifiers. If you're TH2 dominant and you push that, then you're gonna be sick all the time and not gonna be able to defend yourself. And it's gonna to lead to autoimmune disease. What happens if both sides are being pushed, then your body's not able to handle it. You're gonna get sicker. In a neurometabolic approach in our office, we modulate the immune system. We use dietary modification and lifestyle changes. Supplements based on lab findings specific to, findings specific to your body's needs. And we address neurological misfiring and brain function with functional neurology or brain-based therapy. In our office, we look at the whole person, not just the condition itself. So my goal was to reinvent your life. I thank you for joining us on this Facebook Live. I hope that I've done that. We know knowledge in action is how we get results. 
If you guys like what you've heard, I can sit up here all day and preach, but I want you just to jot down a couple quick things. In order for me to help you to reinvent your life, you need to call our office and set an appointment. Our phone number is 704-987-3993. You can also visit us on the web at drakivagreen.com. Now our normal new patient appointment is a $450 value. We charge $179 for two visits in my office. Because you watch this webinar, I'm going to discount it to you. And if you watch this webinar in the future, I will still honor that discount, although it may change depending on what happens. So no promises if this is six months or two years from now. But right now, we're offering this discount at $99. That's for two visits with me. The first visit, I'm gonna do a full thyroid and brain and neurological exam and a full case review. We're gonna really sit down, I'm gonna to listen to you, really listen to you and figure out what's been done and what has not been done to find out where your root causes of your symptoms are coming from. I ask that you bring either shorts and a t-shirts or something that I can get to your knees and elbows for my exam. And I would encourage you to bring your significant other or spouse with you. Uh, the second visit, we're gonna sit back down. We're gonna talk about a game plan. What have I found wrong? How am I going to be able to help you? We will talk about our recommendations, what we can actually do to get you the results that you're looking for. I would ask that you have your significant other at that visit. I think it's valuable for them to see what's wrong with you and be able to help support you in the path towards better health. I thank you guys. My staff is waiting for you to schedule your appointments. I thank you for watching tonight and I look forward to meeting with each of you. Feel free to reach out and post any questions on Facebook and let us know your thoughts. And I look forward to uh, meeting with you one-on-one -on -one and helping you guys down the road. Thank you very, very much. Have a great one. Take care. Thank you.